This video is sponsored by Best Buy and the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. And in those reviews, I have had the opportunity to set up a lot of Galaxy tablets. They're really nice. They're really easy to use. But there are a handful of things I do right out of the box that makes them even more useful to me and I think will make them useful to other creative professionals like you. So let's hit up camera two and dive in. All right, so let's start with all of the settings that I change on the tablet as soon as I get it. So I'm I'm going to jump into the settings app. I'm going to start on the display tab. Now you have a brightness slider here, which decreases or increases the brightness. And there's a setting here called adaptive brightness. Now you may like this, you may not. For me personally, I find the sensor to be a little too sensitive. Uh, so if the brightness in my room goes down a little bit, oftentimes I'll lose like too much brightness, which I don't want. And so I like to toggle that off because when I'm drawing on this thing, when I'm designing something, I don't want that brightness, you know, going back and forth on me. I want it to be consistent and I want to manually set it. And I don't have to jump into the settings to adjust my brightness. If I swipe down from the top, I have my little control center here. I can make this even more useful uh, because whoops, if I pull this all the way down, I have my brightness slider. But if I tap on the edit button up here, I have an option that says brightness control, show one quick pan is expanded and I'm going to say show always and now no matter where I am if I slide down on here my brightness is available to me all the time there's some other screen settings that I like to play with as well there is screen mode right now it's set to natural now by default you probably can't see this on camera but there's a vivid mode and that's what's on and vivid mode really makes your colors pop uh, it really shows how bright they are the contrast is better it just makes this screen look better however for me when I'm designing or drawing something I want to know what that illustration is going to look like on every other screen I don't need it to just look great here I want it to look great everywhere it's going to be seen because of that I tend to like it when I have vivid turned off and natural turned on that way I have a more accurate representation of what the colors are going to be for my work although I will admit it doesn't show up on camera vivid on these OLED screens looks really good let's go back to displays again because there's one more thing that I want to do and that is screen timeout by default it's set to like 30 seconds or a minute when you get a new tablet and for a phone that's great because if you're not looking at your phone for a minute you want it to turn off but a tablet I'm working on so oftentimes what will happen is I'll be drawing something and then I'll move over to my photo reference maybe on another screen on my laptop or something and this will always be turning off and then I'll have to use my thumbprint to unlock it again and everything so I just go ahead and I set it for five minutes so I don't have to worry about it. so those are the core settings that I change first next up let's talk about widgets see all these boxes on my home screen this is what makes my tablet super usable for everyday tasks I can search Google Google. I can see the weather at a glance. I can even see what music is playing and how I can control it. I even have my health tracker on there. It pulls data for my watch, so it even tells me that right now I should stand up and take a break. Oh yeah, this is the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6, and it was sent to me by today's sponsor, Best Buy. Go for walks? Mother's Day is coming up, and I think my mom would really like this. I've been using it to track all of my activities. I can work out to my full potential with fitness tracking on the Galaxy Watch 6. It's super comfortable to wear. I get useful performance insights on duration, distance, calories burned, all while on the go. I can choose from a ton of different exercises to track. Over 90 of them. Are we hiking right now or just walking? I keep sniffing everything. I think we're just walking. It also detects your activities automatically. I often forget to tell it when I'm going for a walk. It it just knows. And I'm not going to be missing any of my important notifications while I'm out and about. Text calls, selecting what music I want to listen to next. I can do that all from my watch. All right. I think we've nailed this walk. Let's go home. This thing also looks really nice. It's water resistant. It's dust resistant. It's durable crystal glass. Keeps your screen looking great and protecting it from all those little bumps and scratches. And of course, there are just a bunch of different watch faces out there you could choose from. There are health related ones that I'm using during the day to keep track of my activities. And then maybe I switch over to something a little more minimalist if I'm hanging out with friends at night. 3,500 steps. We're off to a good start. I can zone in on the results I want during my workouts with personalized heart rate zones. 
I could target my preferred intensity to maintain my heart rate I need to achieve those goals, no matter what activity I'm choosing. And I mentioned how comfortable this is, I can even wear this while I'm sleeping and it doesn't bother me at all. I set up a sleep schedule and I can track my sleep time, track my blood oxygen level, it even has a snore detection on there, and raise my skin temperature during sleep. For a limited amount of time, you can get up to $80 off this watch over at Best Buy. But hurry, do it quick with in-store pickup or fast delivery available. Mother's Day is coming up. Use my link down below in the description. Thanks Best Buy for sponsoring this video. The easiest way to adjust widgets is to tap and hold on the home screen. It's gonna bring you to this kind of edit modify mode and there's a button for widgets. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that. And it has some recommended widgets that you have. You know, there's like battery widgets, there's Bixby, there's a calendar, you have a camera widget, so many different options. Some of the things uh, that I was looking for that I actually have on my home screen aren't here, but that's okay because you could search any app like Spotify uh, and then I can grab my Spotify widget and stick it on the desktop. I'm gonna go back for a second and then I'm gonna tap on setting because there's a couple other things that you see on your home screen that are that are really kind of handy. And one of them is my home screen grid. Right now I have it set to eight by five, but if you want to fit more icons, you can change your grid size. So here I have a six by five, which is going to make my icons and my widgets bigger. And I have a 10.5, which is gonna change that grid and make everything smaller. I'm gonna stick with 8.5 because I got it laid out the way I want it, but you can go in here and change it and, and tweak it to your heart's content. All right, so I have an S Pen here, so I wanna talk about some of the cool features that Samsung has packed into this guy. Let's go back to settings, and I'm gonna go down here to advanced features, and then I'm gonna go over here to S Pen. The first thing you should probably check out if you've never used a Galaxy tablet before is the Air Actions. Not every Samsung tablet has Air Actions. What these are is if you have a Bluetooth stylus as opposed to like a battery, free stylus is this allows you to use the stylus to control various things on here. For example, you can set it up so that you can push the button to take a picture with the camera. Or if you're in the photos app, you can use the pen uh, in the air to swipe between photos. So if you're doing a slideshow and you have this set up somewhere, you can do that. So there's some various actions and those can be turned on here. The other cool feature is something called Air Command. Now you've probably seen this on your tablet already, but there is an icon with a little pen on it. And when I hover over it, you can see it, that's Air Command. And if I tap on it, it brings up some options and you can put different apps in here and do different things. And that is all controlled right here air command, so if I tap on it, it's gonna show you like the menu style. So I have the, the big menu because I have a lot of screen real estate, but you can go compact and just see the icons if you want it to. And you could also set up all of your shortcuts here and you can put any app that you have available on your tablet up in here. For example, I threw Clip Studio up there because if I'm holding the pen, I probably wanna open Clip Studio, which is my favorite app to draw in. More on that in a minute. But if you don't want that, say you don't use that feature and you don't really want this like icon floating around on your screen, no problem. You could actually toggle off the show air command icon if you don't want it there. And if you do wanna use it, but you don't wanna see it, you can open that with a pen button just by toggling it on and off. Another S Pen feature that is worth checking on is S Pen to text. And that makes me write in search bars and things like that with the S Pen. So it doesn't bring up the keyboard, I could just write things. And the handwriting uh, recognition is really surprisingly good. There's some other stuff worth exploring here. I'm gonna go to more S Pen settings. This is a good one. I've decided to turn it off because I only really use this in my house, so I'm not gonna really lose it. But warn me if my S Pen is left behind, so that way if you're taking this to the office and you leave your S Pen there, it's gonna warn you, so that's kinda nice. Uh, you can also use multiple S Pens with it. That's something I have turned on because I have lots of S Pens, but you might not need it. But some super useful stuff. The next thing I wanna talk about is whenever I get a tablet, the first thing I do is I download my favorite drawing apps. Now I've done entire videos on my 10 favorite Android drawing apps. I really need to update that because there's more now. <laughs> they keep releasing apps. But first and foremost is Clip Studio. It's not for everybody. It's my favorite thing to draw in. And the main reason is it has this simple interface on Android, but the downside here is you do have to pay uh, a subscription fee, annual or monthly, depending on you know uh, how you wanna set that up. Even though it is my personal favorite uh, and it's something that I use across 
various interfaces, whether it's Mac, PC, Android, iPad. I understand if you don't want to invest in that. So there are some other options there that I want to talk about. The other one I would check out is iBez Paint X, which is completely free to use. But the downside is that it's ad supported. Now it's not such a big deal on a tablet like this. As you can see, I got a, an ad down here, but I have so much screen real estate. Oops, let's go in here and edit this document before I draw. Now let's move my ad up to the top. But this is really nice to draw on. There's a lot of pens. Um, you can unlock brushes by watching ads and those brushes usually unlock for the better part of a day. So it's not gonna bombard you with ads, but you are definitely going to see them. So this is one I would definitely recommend checking out if you're looking for a drawing app. And the third one is, is if you'd like to just pay for an inexpensive app and just own it and not have to deal with ads. Infinite Painter is the way to go. Uh, it's a free download so you can use it, but then if you wanna unlock everything, you have to pay. The next thing that you really should check out, even if you don't plan on using it that much on your tablet, is something called Dex, just because it's pretty cool. So I swipe down from the top and Dex is one of my icons in this tray right here. And what Dex is, is it turns your tablet into like a PC like interface. Now what you saw there is not much change. That's because they recently redesigned Dex to look more like the Android interface, which I kind of like. But now if I open something like Clip Studio, this one defaulted to full screen, but if I tap this here, it'll just go to window mode and I can come in and resize that window to the size I need it. Now say you don't like the new decks and you want the classic decks, I'm gonna swipe down and then if I tap and hold on decks, it's gonna bring up the settings here. Right now I'm set to new. If I go to classic, it's gonna to go to classic start decks. There we go, it's, it's booting in here. And as you can see, it looks much more Windows-esque. You know, you've got your time down here, your battery information. Um, you still have some of your icons here. And now, will it open up in a window? It will, and so I have everything window eyes that I can sit here and I can draw on it. I could pull something up over here on this side, maybe, you know, a photo reference or something like that. So Dex can be really useful. All right, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say exit Dex because if you want that dual screen feature or to use your screen real estate differently, you don't necessarily have to jump into Dex to do that. We can multitask right here from our standard Android interface. So I'm gonna swipe up from the bottom when I have an app open. I'm gonna tap and hold on an icon and then I can drag it where I wanna drag it and there we go. Now I have a web browser on one side and whatever application I want on the other side. You're also gonna see these three little dots here and what that's gonna let me do, I'll use my finger, is it lets me resize it. So if I want some photo reference here while I'm drawing, I could totally do that. And on a large screen like this, it's really nice. There's also a quick launch on the right hand side if you swipe over you can quick launch various applications and with the edit button you can edit that but one of the other cool things you can do is you can set presets of two windows open at once so for example I use my drawing app with a web browser all the time and so I've set that up as uh, I just erased it. Brad, what are you doing? But I set that up as a shortcut. Let me open it up and see if I can remember how to reset it now. So if I have both of these set up, I go back to the desktop and then I slide open that tray. It's gonna show me that thing I have here and I can just move this down and boom, now that is saved and anytime I need it, I can open up both of those apps at the same time. Another thing that I think is really important is to set up your storage. Since I am working with files that I am maybe drawing on here, but then editing or finalizing over on the desktop, I need to be able to cloud sync things. So there is a My Files app here, which is basically the file system for your Android tab. And I could just tap on images and see all of the images that I have on this thing, audio files, documents, that sort of thing. But the one thing that's really important to me is my Google Drive. I've made sure to go in here and set it up. That way I can save files or share files directly to my drive and then I can open them up on any other computer that I need. I'm gonna bring my phone over here for a minute so you can see my favorite where to way to share things. I'm gonna select a file and down here I'm gonna say share. And of course you could send it to email messages, whatever, but there's an option on Samsung devices called quick share. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that and it's gonna find devices on my network to share it with. And one of them is my Galaxy Note phone. So I'm gonna go ahead I tap that correctly? And as you can see here, it is sharing it. And so I can open up the image that came 
uh, from this tablet. This is also an app that you could download and set up on a Windows computer. And there are some like third party apps that allow you to use it on a Mac too. So it's a really handy way to share your files. If you're just working on something and just wanna quickly get it to another computer. Another really awesome, super cool feature that you should absolutely be taking advantage of of this tablet is since it's such a beautiful screen, you can use this as a second display for your laptop PC. So I'm gonna scroll down, rather swipe down. I'm gonna swipe down to bring up more options. And one of the options here is second screen. Now, in order to use this, you have to be logged into your Samsung account. Um, I'm not logged into that computer right now. And it will turn your beautiful Galaxy tablet into an extra screen for your computer. Pretty, pretty handy. All right, another thing I wanna talk about is modes. Let's jump back into settings. I'm gonna scroll up to modes and routines, and this is really handy. And this is handy on your Samsung phone as well. You could set your sleep time, so that way you aren't gonna get any notifications when you don't want notifications. You could set your drive times if there's certain times of day when you're commuting. Maybe in the evenings you do not not want to work you can set it to relax so you only get certain notifications at that time of day or work which is like all the notifications all the time or maybe you like working without notifications but these different modes i find are really helpful to making this so much more useful to me all day long okay we're gonna go to hard mode for a minute i'm gonna scroll all the way down to about this tablet then i'm gonna go to software information and then i'm gonna go to build number what we're gonna do is we're going to put this in developer mode and in order to do that i need to tap on build number seven times one two three four five six seven and developer mode has been turned on and if we scrub down to our list we have added an option for developers so samsung developed these interfaces for phones and they've adapted them for tablets and a phone is significantly smaller, so the animations seem faster and snappier. Even though the processor in this thing is fantastic and can handle so much, it doesn't always feel that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to speed up the animations so they animate faster. And so this feels snappier on this very large screen. There are a lot of options here, but I am looking specifically for Windows animation scale. So I'm gonna tap on that. I'm gonna set it to 0.5, so it'll be twice as fast. Transition animation scale, 0.5, so it's twice as fast. Animation duration scale, 0.5 so it's twice as fast. So now I'm gonna go settings, shrink, settings, shrink, settings, shrink. It's so fast. Swiping between things is just gonna feel more fluid and all sorts of stuff swiping up from the top. All of these animations are just gonna be much faster. So those are the things that I do to set up my Galaxy tablets. What do you do? Let me know down below in the comments. I would love to hear and get more advice. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.